A lot of people use the internet and a growing number of people are using Linux, so I'm going to help you IP config Linux today on TQA Weekly. Welcome to TQA Weekly. I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. Z-Axis, and yes, you may call me that. And before we get to the topic of the show, I just need to shout out tqaweekly.com slash show notes. If you've got questions about content in my shows, this is the page you need to go. And I've been working a whole week on the code that makes this run. You now select the topic you want at the bottom of the page if you want to refine the list of episodes. So if you want to learn about Linux, you've got Linux. Want to learn about the Linux terminal? I've got that down there too. Windows, Mac, how to code, how to challenge me, anything you want, any episode you need, it is all selectable, definable, refinable. All at the bottom of that page. So that was tqaweekly.com slash show notes. That will bring you straight to the right page. As for today, a lot of people use the internet. Yeah, I know. Dead giveaway. You're watching me on the internet. I'm pretty sure about that. A lot of people are going to Linux and Linux likes products. Don't believe me? Look at the Macintosh for a minute. And there's a lot of things we used to do in Windows that was fairly easy. You know, open up the DOS prompt, start IP configuring, checking out our hardware for a network, go into DOS and check out the net stat to see what's connecting to our computer. These are all things we know because we've spent the less 20 years using Windows, a lot of you are starting to migrate towards Linux. Why? Customizable, open source, free, probably. So this episode is dedicated to that. How do we IP config Linux? And obviously that's not the actual command you're going to use in Linux, but I've got a demo for you. So let's get to it. In order to access the terminal, as usual, control alt -T, by default loads in most Linuxes, the terminal. I'll just open up this window because some of these commands will give off a lot of output. So the first command we're gonna be analyzing today is the ARP command. This command allows us to verify the connectivity and status of network adapters. It tells you the type of hardware, the address of the hardware, and the interface address. So that is ARP. As you can see, the address on my current card connects to 192.168.0.1. That's where it's connecting to. Its hardware type is Ethernet and its interface address is ETH0, which will be important later. The second command I find useful is the netstack command and is also available in Windows. It allows you to see the active connections that have or are being made. It will echo a long list of information. You can optionally use other parts of commands to get it to do various things. So let's just start off with the basic command, netstat, just like you would write in the DOS prompt in Windows. Gives you a lot of information. Unlike Windows though, it doesn't give you the IPs unless you specifically ask for it. Now, this is a lot of information. If you use the netstat space pipe space again head command, it only gives you the header, which is more important than the rest of the information unless you're actually looking for an IP address, in which case, why? Now, if your connections fail, and don't say it can't, because it can't. In Windows, you do with some sort of bizarre thing and it would just reconnect, or it would reconnect all by itself. Linux. Normally it will reconnect by itself, but let's say it doesn't. There's a command to restart. So in the terminal, you would type in sudo, which is requesting root command for those who don't remember, slash, that's the backslash, etc. etc, backslash again, I-N-I-T dot D, backslash again, networking, restart. Then you hit enter. If anything was offline, which in my case it's not, it would restart the hardware without any commentary. Mine is fine, so it'll restart it, but it will bitch, so hold on. After I entered a password to gain root access, that was 
how to restart the interface. Now, you can check on devices by using the iwconfig command, which is like the ipconfig. iwconfig, when you type it in, would do like ipconfig, give you your wireless information. I don't have it. You can actually isolate it down to one specific card. If you already know the address of your wireless card, you type in iwconfig. I'm just going to write the address of my ethernet, although I know it's not wireless. And it will give you information. So that would be iwconfig space name of your wireless card. Typically it's WLAN0, your wireless card. And then it will give you all the information like the SSID, basically the data width and all that information that you may need. There is another way of figuring out, at least in this case for Ethernet, it's the if config command. So you type in if config and it gives you all your cards. Now this is the information you'd see except wireless would also have the SSID and the other information. You can also target this one. You can if config Etho0 in my case for the specific one. If you want to see just Ethernet, you can if config space minus a pipe grep, which I will get to in a get to in another episode. And in my case, I'll write Ethernet, so ETH, and it will give me the status basically of the hardware and the hardware address. And the last command I'll explain for today, which doesn't need root, but it will say it wants root, so type it in anyway. So sudo space ls h w or how I like to remember Linux show. If you type that in, it will give you everything about your computer and I'm not kidding. Everything that has to do with your computer, multimedia, USB ports, your serial uncleaned, basically everything in your computer, storage, PCI cards, firewire, networking, display, multimedia, just about, it even gives me my host bridge and all that. It gives you everything about your computer, which is not a networking command per se, but can be configured to. So you type in sudo lshw space minus class network. There's a space between class and network. And it will only look for anything that is network class, so wireless or wired. So isolate it down to what we are specifically wanting. So in my case, I have a Realtek semiconductor with an address of Ethernet 0 with a size and capacity of 1 gigabit with a width of 64 bits and 33 megahertz, which is fairly standard. Notice how at the bottom of that you have capabilities and configuration. So for those who wanted to know this information, how to restart your network, how to basically take a peek at your network, you have all the basic commands that you need to do so now. For more information on this episode of commands I use and even the sources for this episode, head over to tkwayweekly.com slash se2ep26 which will bring you to the show notes page where I include all this information. If you head over to tkwayweekly.com slash show notes, it will actually give you out a page that can list every single one of my now 76 episodes of TQA Weekly. So I started this in September of 2010 and still going strong with 50 episodes a year. At least that's the target. Next week, we'll be analyzing CSS 101. I'm going to be explaining the difference between ID and class, insert joke here, why the div tag won over the layer tag, yay, Netscape is dead, and why external style sheets are better than internal style sheets, obviously I'll explain that one next week. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to TQA Weekly. For more information like our show notes, how to join our mailing list, Get your own TQA Weekly branded gear and apparel or even that gag gear stuff that I'm actually making right now, our Android application or anything else, head over to TQAWeekly.com. Stay safe and online. Have a great day.